is here. Now broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. The White House is dismissing allegations from a potential whistleblower who claims the administration has mishandled the federal investigation into Hunter Biden. Telling Fox News in a statement, President Biden has made clear that this matter would be handled independently by the Justice Department under the leadership of a U.S. attorney appointed by former President Trump, free from any political interference by the White House. However, an IRS criminal supervisory agent seeking whistleblower protections says the investigation is simply being mishandled, alleging that there are clear conflicts of interest and that the president's son was given preferential treatment. Yeah, details, right? Details. Your federal government is that corrupt, that corrupt. However corrupted you've imagined, they are that nice synopsis from kevin cork fox news there and it's a good place to start because this week three stories broke which removed all doubt about the pervasiveness of the corruption in the swamp and while they weren't directly connected the implications many of the events pertaining to them very much interconnected I'm going to break all that down for you, tying all of these stories in together with the biggest story of all that continues not really to be told in the day to day. And that is what China is doing to undermine us every step of the way. How the world continues to become less stable by the day. Take a look at what's happening in the Sudan. Every time you turn around it's somewhere else. But it's at the base level, the corruption. Now, because I'm never inclined to just slob a pile of poo in your direction and say, all right, and back to you, I'm always looking informationally, not just to disseminate the the facts, the truth to you, but also to look for answers and solutions. And the good news is where there is information and where people have it, we see opportunity for hope. So I'm going to put all of this together throughout the course of tonight's show. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. It is always an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. I'm the host of The Brian Mudd Show, basing out of my home station, WJNO, in West Palm Beach. Check out The Brian Mudd Show podcast wherever you get your podcast at Brian Mudd Radio on social. Just talking to Mr. Producer, I need to to get my blue check mark back. Not a conspiracy this time. There have been times in the past in which my blue check mark would would go away, and uh, you know, then then mysteriously it would show up again. This time, I I know it's no conspiracy. I just have not paid my eight bucks a month to uh, to Mr. Musk to uh, to get the blue check mark back. But uh, you can uh, still find me at Brian Mud Radio uh, Twitter and uh, plenty of other social platforms. All right, so let's dive in here. Let's dive in here. The the first of the three stories that broke this week that really speak to the pervasiveness of the corruption in the swamp. You, you start with John Ratcliffe, the former director of national intelligence. He provided his prepared testimony to Congress pertaining to COVID origins, in which he said, quoting, my informed assessment as a person with as much or more access than anyone. To our government's intelligence during the initial year of the virus outbreak and pandemic onset has been and continues to be that a lab leak is the only explanation credibly supported by our intelligence, by science and by common sense. Okay, so there it is. The only explanation. Not uh, the most likely, not Hey, you know, there's a sliver of a a chance it's something else. The only explanation, the Wuhan lab. Not that this is a surprise to any of us. Because as Ratcliffe testified, aside from literally all of the evidence pointing to the Wuhan lab leak, it's also just a matter of common sense. 
I mean, that, that's what most of us had to do is to independent of having access to all U.S. intelligence on the matter. But it's the rest of the story that speaks to the institutionalized corruption on the matter. For example, in the testimony, know how many times Anthony Fauci sought insight on the matter from intelligence officials? Not once, according to Ratcliffe. Yet he naturally felt confident speaking out on the matter. Another witness, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State David Fife, he addressed that directly in his sworn ter- testimony, saying, Many of the most influential U.S. government and academic authorities on virology were coordinating to disprove any type of lab theory. These officials and scientists knew that COVID may have come from a lab. They knew that a lab leak could have resulted from research in Wuhan funded by the U.S. government. And they knew that if such research were, in fact, part of COVID's origin, well, they could face professional and personal embarrassment. So these officials and scientists evidently collaborated to convince the government not to investigate the origins of COVID. Now, let me walk you back to what Radcliffe testified to China's government doing during that same window of time. Okay? While our government officials were getting together and deciding that they were not going to investigate the origins of of COVID and, and were working to throw us off the scent. Quoting Ratcliffe on this note, the Chinese Communist Party, they were destroying medical tests, samples and data to intimidating and disappearing witnesses and journalists. That's always fun, the disappearing of witnesses and journalists to lying and coercing global health authorities, even spreading propaganda. Now, again, who is really surprised? But then you put it together and what you get are U.S. officials, a la the Fauci and the Fauciist, who quite literally were doing the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party while they eliminated the evidence and uh, all of the people associated with it. Hey, details. And given that we know Anthony Fauci's National Institutes of Health financially contributed to the Wuhan lab, which even he himself has admitted to in previous congressional testimony, well, it all adds up. Yes, your, your federal government is that corrupt. Then there was, speaking of uh, Twitter-related things, Elon's revelation. All right, so our federal government is so corrupt that we've long known that the FBI has flat out advised, quote unquote, advised social media platforms that certain disinformation was likely soon to hit. You know, like the entirely truthful Hunter Biden laptop story by the New York Post, which was censored along with all who tried to share it on various platforms prior to the 2020 election. What we didn't know until Tuesday is that they might have just been flat out doing the censoring at the social media platforms, along with spying on any private communications they chose to. In Elon's interview with Tucker Carlson came a revelation that the FBI was granted full access to direct messages of private citizens on Twitter, quoting Elon. The degree to which government agencies effectively had full access to everything that was going on at Twitter blew my mind. Now, what kind of country, for that matter, what current country spies on its citizens this way? It would seem the COVID cover-up wasn't the only Chinese communist-style operation underway in this country. And, of course, it begs the question, well, is this happening at Meta and all of its social media properties? What about Google happening there when and with all of its properties? Could it be happening at TikTok? Oh, I mean, come on. That's a silly question because we already know 
That is directly controlled by the Chinese Communist government. But then again, think about it. Hold on. So just as with the COVID cover-up, were we, in, in a very similar way, our government doing more Chinese communist-style tactics? Is there really any distance between what the chai comes are doing with TikTok and perhaps our communist and, and our corrupt government are doing with existing social media platforms not named Twitter at the moment? We still don't have answers on that. What are the odds that it was only happening at Twitter? Again, your federal government is that corrupt. And as it turned out, we had yet another bombshell breaking news story pointing to federal government corruption at the highest levels. You know, the biggest joke in recent weeks since the Trump indictment is that no one's above the law. Yeah, no, no one's above the law, right? You know, and, and D.A. Alvin Bragg's proclivity to use the, the Merrick Garland line of, of pursuing the law without fear or favor. I mean, th- those two are real peas in a pod. You know, the, the agenda has been clear. And tying this in for a moment, Bragg and what they're working on, who is the biggest threat to China? Who has represented the biggest threat to China in modern times? Is it not Donald Trump? So, yes, the agenda is clear, and intellectually you know this, anecdotally you know this. But as always, there are two sides to stories, one side to facts. And the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, being motivated by his desire to get Trump and to make a name for himself, evidenced by so many facts. I mean, starting with this number, 52%. That's the percentage of felony cases Alvin Bragg has downgraded to misdemeanors since becoming DA. In this number... 1,119, that's the number of felony cases brought to him last year alone that he refused to even attempt to prosecute. And one more number for you, 462%. That's how much less likely criminals are to ever serve jail time since Bragg became the Manhattan DA. Isn't that interesting? And yet he goes through legal hoops to try to turn a misdemeanor into a felony in the case of Trump. Judging by the man's performance, food would appear to be the only category Bragg has pursued without fear or favor. And as for Garland, the original fear or favor man, oh, he's nothing if not consistent, as in consistently ignoring the corruption of his boss. I mean, yes, some will point to Garland's appointing of a special prosecutor over Joe Biden's proclivity to paper the places he's been with classified docs. However, even in that situation, which was unavoidable once word got out he didn't provide the appointed prosecutor the same sweeping authority to investigate other matters that he did to the trump appointed prosecutor oh yeah and then there's the hunter biden irs whistleblower we'll pick up there next i'm brian mudd in for the great one mud love in Let me ask you, what the heck is going on with the banks? These bank failures are absolutely nuts. How are we supposed to find sanity in this mess? And I was talking with Augusta Precious Metals, and they said, tons of people are buying gold to protect the retirement savings right now. I think it's more important than ever to own gold. And guess what? If you have $100,000 plus saved for retirement, Augusta will actually pay you in pure gold to learn how gold IRAs can protect you. Reach out to Augusta Precious Metals today and get started with gold. If you're worried about the bank failures, this is something you can do for yourself. Just call 877-4-GOLD-IRA to learn how to protect your retirement and get your free gold coin. That's Augusta Precious Metals at 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Again, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before any investment and see risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. My client wrestled with whether or not to come forward. He had a lot of sleepless nights about coming forward with this. At the end of the day, he decided 
that he could not live with himself if he stayed quiet and said nothing. So he's coming forward, but he knows that he's going to be attacked. Mark Lytle, the attorney for the would-be whistleblower, if he gets allowed to be a whistleblower before Congress. Let's pick up there. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. As I talk about the three big stories during the course of this week that all speak to the greater pervasive corruption that's been going on for some time and ultimately how the Bidens sold this country out to China and China is leveraging that to the hilt right now. So, yeah, let's talk about the Hunter Biden IRS whistleblower. This is the latest bit of news and potential supporting evidence of a corrupt two-tiered system of justice. So in a letter penned to congressional leaders by Mark Lytle, person you just heard, the attorney representing an IRS criminal super, supervisory agent who seeks to serve as a whistleblower in the Hunter Biden investigation, quoting the letter the Lytle sent to Congress. My client has already made legally protected disclosures internally at the IRS through counsel to the U.S. Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration and to the Department of Justice Office of Inspector General. The protected disclosures, one, contradict sworn testimony to Congress by a senior political appointee. Two, involve failure to mitigate clear conflicts of interest in the ultimate disposition of the case. And three, detail examples of preferential treatment and politics improperly infecting decisions and protocols that would normally be followed by career law enforcement professionals in similar circumstances if the subject were not politically connected. Now, notably, in an interview with CBS News, when questioned about the credibility of the whistleblower, Lytle said this, really doesn't come down to his credibility, whether you believe him or not, because the things he's been through are very well documented in the emails and other communications with the Department of Justice. So, hmm, things that make you go, hmm, the Biden administration is alleged to be covering up Biden family crimes. Not exactly hard to believe, is it? Especially given that, at a minimum, there's video evidence of Hunter Biden committing felonies with an actual crack whore. I mean, you think about so, a lot, so many of the absurdities that are out there with these things, right? I mean, here on one hand, we have Trump indicted over a hush money payments to a porn star and to a playboy a Playboy model. And, and on the other hand, we have actual felonies evidenced in video with a crack whore. Uh, you, you cannot make this stuff up. One that is being pursued legally, the the other no charges that have been brought against. Yeah, no, no two-tier system of justice here. Picking up and we'll work in some of your calls as well. 877-381-3811. I'm Brian Mudd and for the great one, Mark Levin. Let me ask you, what the heck is going on with the banks? These bank failures are absolutely nuts. How are we supposed to find sanity in this mess? And I was talking with Augusta Precious Metals, and they said tons of people are buying gold to protect the retirement savings right now. I think it's more important than ever to own gold. And guess what? If you have $100,000 plus saved for retirement, Augusta will actually pay you in pure gold to learn how gold IRAs can protect you. Reach out to Augusta Precious Metals today and get started with gold. If you're worried about the bank failures, this is something you can do for yourself. Just call 877-4-GOLD-IRA to learn how to protect your retirement and get your free gold coin. That's Augusta Precious Metals at 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Again, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before any investment and see risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. They can clone the others, but there's only one. Mark Levin, and you can call him at 877-381-3811. Nixon and I, I got to know him. Uh, he was a very tough guy. 
He was, I guess some people would say this about me too, he was his own worst enemy. I mean, I could say that a little bit about myself, much less so than people think, I will say. But um, he was um, sort of a paranoid guy. Super candid interview that is coming to you 8 Eastern Sunday on the Fox News Channel. Life, Liberty, Levin. You absolutely do not want to miss it. Mark with the former president uh, live from Mar-a-Lago. And you, you, this is going to be something that you're really going to enjoy. You get a little flavor from it there. By the way, uh, the great one is at the Reagan Ranch this evening. He will be back on Monday. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. And as we are taking a look at the big bombshell stories of the week, that kind of tie together, that speak to the the greater corruption within our federal government. But also, that's been part of a longer theme, because, again, the Biden family corruption goes back a long way, right? And a lot of it ties back to China, who is taking advantage of us around every turn. And more and more, you take a look at what our federal government has been involved in. The tactics that are being used, what we have now come to learn that are straight out of communist China. I mean, where is the distance when our federal government is engaging in the, the same type of tactics of spying on citizens as the, the Chai comes are? Where's the, the distance when you have institutionalized corruption, whereby you do what you can to eliminate political opponents, including the person who has represented the single greatest threat to China? In modern American history, that being Donald Trump. It's the kind of stuff you can't make up. It's kind of like the Steele dossier. You know, when you read through the Steele dossier, you're like, who could even come up with this stuff? It's always the case that reality is stranger than fiction, right? And you go, they were the Hunter Biden tales, right? I mean, that's ultimately what we learned. Maybe there was a touch of elaboration in there somewhere, though I'm not entirely sure, based upon the videos. But yeah, as I mentioned, here we have Hunter Biden on video committing felonies with an actual crack core. He's not been charged for anything. I mean, seven-year-old hush money payments to, uh, to a porn star, to a Playboy model. Get him. Man, make sure that guy goes away. Video evidence of felonies. Yeah. Let alone, you know, the far more severe stuff like, you know, selling out our country to China. We'll talk about some of that as we continue throughout the course of the show. So, yeah, we got a whistleblower and an attorney asserting hard evidence of a two tiered system of justice. Will this be heard? Will Congress allow for this to be heard? That's even the question right now. I was reaching out to my sources yesterday and today. Mum's the word. There's been no movement yet. Got a couple days now where you have this whistleblower. I, I, you remember Vindman. I mean, who, who could ever forget uh, Alexander Vim? I mean, the, the whistleblower of all whistleblowers when we're going to impeach Trump. You, you've got to let the whistleblowers be heard. This is very serious. Again, we, we can uh, not uh, do anything but pursue the law without fear or favor, and no one is above it, of course. But man, this guy. Oh, but he's not actually the only one. Even this week, he's not the only whistleblower. Yeah, no kidding. This is another story that's absolutely being buried, and, and that is something that we will get to in due course as well. Uh, well. Let's go to the phones. We've got Tony in Clifton, New Jersey, listening on the great WABC. Tony, welcome to the show. How are you? Nice to, nice to chat with you tonight, Brian. Doing great. Thanks so, for listening. So this is all stunning. The information is stunning. And, of course, for those of us who listen to Mark and follow the daily events, we really are never sure where everything is going to be going. But what's interesting is that we now can have information, if this is all verified, on Hunter Biden and his doings. 
because I doubt, I always doubt that anything is ever going to happen to Joe Biden. But if they get his son, that would make me happy. And that would also uh, put in black and white that his administration sold out our country um, and all these other things make a trail that we believe that 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 Joe Biden is an illegitimate president based on everything we're finding out with Twitter and all the suppression of information we needed to know. Yeah. And I well, always thought he was an, Ill, an illegitimate president. Well, well Tony, uh, you know, you, you bring up a, a couple instructive points. And the first is Joe Biden as president of the United States. The mechanism to deal with him if uh, it, it is necessary is the impeachment process. Ultimately, he would he would not be arrested as president of the United States. Uh, that that would be the mechanism. Hunter is obviously fair game. The important aspect of all this is informationally to get it out there to the American people. I've got a lot more during the course of the show that I'm going to put out that kind of ties more of this together. But one of the big stories that is not being discussed, that's developed over the past week, isn't just this one whistleblower, but it's that there's actually been another who's been attempting to come out. And he's a former Obama administration official who wants to speak to the corruption that he witnessed when Joe Biden was vice president with Hunter, and he won't be heard. One of the things that you start thinking about, if you take several steps back in all of this, Joe Biden has been in government uh, since the, the First World War, I believe, approximately. And having been as corruptible as we have seen him to be, the number of people who have witnessed misfeasance associated with him and eventually his son, just imagine, no telling how many people there actually are. But one of the big problems you have First, how many people within the swamp want to give them up? How many people in the swamp are, are truly uncorruptible? How many people are, even if they want to do the right thing, afraid of their own careers? And what happens if they step out of line? But as we have this one whistleblower, a career IRS guy, a supervisory criminal investigator, as we have another who is a 15-year former White House employee, an Obama administration official, if we get enough people that go, you know what? There's a chance. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. And so do I expect that anytime in the very near future, we're going to have real accountability? I think history has shown us, sadly, no. I mean, look how many examples there are right down to the greatest conspiracy in the history of these states united which was the trump russia collusion conspiracy the steel dossier the pain for that by the hillary clinton campaign the dnc that ended up using their law firm the getting that through the intelligence agencies the justice department into uh, the the fisa courts illegally surveilling the candidate and eventually the president himself when there's not any any accountability associated with that our expectations have to be low but the difference is twofold the first is again some of this is out there in the open and obvious it is a fact it is beyond dispute there is video evidence of hunter biden committing felonies now there's not video evidence that we are aware of publicly at this point of the felonies that tie him directly to China, but there's enough other evidence that's been produced that certainly points to it. The Chai comms were paying the Bidens for something, right? And Hunter Biden miraculously ended up on the board of Burisma for some reason, right? And so if you can just get enough of these people that go, hold on, there's strength in numbers here. Maybe we actually have a chance. There's also another dynamic, and, and this gets into... You know, just theory, uh, you know, surely theoretical stuff. RFK Jr. comes out this week and he announces a a run for president. He's pulling in the double digits. I mean, out of nowhere. Right. Against an incumbent president. 
tells you how many Democrats are looking for anything else. And so maybe you could have the potential for some of the swamp creatures that maybe are swamp creatures, but they just don't want another four years of Biden to potentially think this is our opportunity to throw them overboard and to get somebody else and maybe get a candidate they would prefer into the race while there's still time to do that. There are all types of possibilities along these lines. One of the things I'm going to tie together tonight is where people have information. The problem, as Rush always would say, low information voters. Where we see people getting real information, where people are informed on a lot of this stuff, their attitude changes. The approval rating for China and the United States right now is 19%. Ironically, there's a greater percentage of this country using TikTok than there is approving of China. And it just goes to show, you know, the level of ignorance that persists. But there are opportunities and information is the key for sure. Let's go to Kathleen in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Kathleen, welcome to the show. Hi, Brian. What I'd like to ask about is these 51 intel agents um, signed a paper that Hunter's laptop was rushing disinformation. We had people like Clapper and Brennan, which are usual, but then Leon Panetta. But the one that really got me was William Webster. Him signing this paper. And, and this, this laptop from hell book by Miranda Devine clearly states a lot of this. It really was an eye opener. And, and she goes to it. I love that book. I know, it's Top great Mel. material. Yeah, and, and appreciate the uh, call, Kathleen. Yeah, we're going to get to the Blinken Intel letter coming up in the uh, second hour of the show because that's kind of the next layer of all of this and how it's been going on for years. Of course, to your point, going back to the 2020 election cycle where right before the election you have – these intel officials, these former intel officials, largely that came out and said, oh, yeah, it's a Russian disinformation, the, the laptop. And that was the mechanism that was used for the censorship of the New York Post story. And we now have the State Department that is not commenting on this development that Blinken is behind it. And we have the Biden administration generally that that's not talking about it. But again, Getting the information out there, all it takes, few people here and there that want to tell the truth. And you can really begin to have this whole thing unravel on them and reach the point where your godless souls and slanderous mainstream news media just can't avoid these stories anymore. That's the single biggest issue is simply reaching those that are not informed informationally. And it's easier with somebody like Biden because it's not like it's Obama to where whatever you think of Barack Obama, you do have your average Democrat that just loves the guy. You know, for for many Trump supporters, Obama is that guy for for Democrats. And so you are not going to remove them from that relation. Uh, Let's get real. I mean, there's a really good chance Joe Biden's family isn't even all that fond of the guy. I mean, the guy's got no support. It's just a matter of him not having been Trump. And there were passionate voters in his direction because of Trump. But there is an opportunity here, and that's what we continue to work on, the information. We'll pick up there next. I'm Brian Mudd, in for the great one. Mudd Lovin. Let me ask you, what the heck is going on with the banks? These bank failures are absolutely nuts. How are we supposed to find sanity in this mess? And I was talking with Augusta Precious Metals, and they said tons of people are buying gold to protect the retirement savings right now. I think it's more important than ever to own gold. And guess what? If you have $100,000 plus saved for retirement, Augusta will actually pay you in pure gold to learn how gold IRAs can protect you. Reach out to Augusta Precious Metals today and get started with gold. If you're worried about the bank failures, this is something you can do for yourself. Just call 877-4-GOLD-IRA to learn how to protect your retirement and get your free gold coin. 
That's Augusta Precious Metals at 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Again, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before any investment and see risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. When uh, there'd be the first frost, you turn on the windshield wipers, not a joke, and there'd be an oil slick on the window. Literally an oil slick on the front windshield. And how many folks across the country have had similar experiences? You know, we know public health impacts of toxins in air and water, and there's real, real effects. Hey, you cannot make this stuff up. And that, of course, is the, the former truck driver himself. Wasn't he a school bus driver at, at one point as, as well, I believe? Uh, yes, that, that President Biden today, as he was creating yet a, another federal bureaucracy this one environmental justice yes we now have an office of environmental justice as all federal policy must now be viewed through the prism of the impact of race and environmental justice and oil slings on on windshields it's a real crisis (sighs) brian mudd in for mark levin and so okay Okay, the two-tiered justice system. We've got a whistleblower and an attorney asserting hard evidence of a two-tiered system of justice. Will the whistleblower be allowed to be heard by Congress? Will uh, Adam Schiff call for the whistleblower to be heard the way that he did with Vindman? Now, I'm sure Schiff will, will call for justice In this case, at about the same time, Alvin Bragg turns down a donut. But it would appear that Congress hearing the testimony and pursuing the claims of the would-be whistleblower would be the only chance for justice in that particular case. And that's because the senior political appointee who committed perjury before Congress, according to said whistleblower, Yeah, none other than the original fear or favor man, Merrick Garland. Yeah, your federal government really is that corrupt. Elections have consequences as a country. We just continue to literally and figuratively pay the price for poor decisions. And that's why it's imperative that informationally we do our part to share the message to spread the truth because that is what's missing in this country and when you take a look at all of this in context you can see the layers go back to the obama administration time and time and time again including with mara garland which i mean hey all the things about mcconnell but thank god that he kept that guy from becoming a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, we've got an uphill battle, but there is room for optimism. But yeah, they do think you're stupid. We'll talk about Merrick Garland and Blinken next. Spry Mud in for the great one, Mark Levin. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. The House Judiciary Committee is requesting more information from Secretary of State Antony Blinken about how that letter started. 51 former intelligence officials calling the Hunter Biden laptop story Russian disinformation. During the 2020 campaign, Blinken was a senior advisor to then candidate Joe Biden. In a letter to Blinken, Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan says his staff spoke with former CIA Deputy Director Michael Morell. Morell signed that statement, and Jordan says Morell's testimony shows Blinken. Lincoln set it in motion. 
Huh, look at that. And the Biden administration, they're not commenting on any of this. Fox's Rich Edson with the nice synopsis there. By the way, we do have breaking news. The United States Supreme Court granting the Department of Justice's emergency stay on the abortion drug mifepristone. And so it will remain available. The Supreme Court could revisit this case, but they have granted the emergency stay by the Biden administration. So the abortion drug remains available for now. All right. So tying together all of the corruption over the years, including three bombshell breaking news stories this week, some of which have gained a fair amount of traction, others not really much at all, all of which are extraordinarily relevant and really showed the parallels between what's been going on in China and what's been happening with our government and how our government under the Biden administration especially more closely resembles the Chinese government than we'd ever envisioned. Really makes you go, hmm. I am Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. I'm the host of The Brian Mudd Show from my home station, WJNO in West Palm Beach. No underground bunker here. I sit seven feet above sea level in a studio that literally had its roof ripped off during Hurricane Wilma once upon a time. And uh, just, you know, miles down the road from the former president. And so that's kind of a plus along with the sunshine and a great governor and things like that. It is always an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. I invite you to check out the Brian Mudd Show podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can hit me across various social channels at Brian Mudd Radio. They think you're stupid. They think you're stupid. And they are that corrupt. It was early March when Attorney General Merrick Garland testified before the Senate Oversight Committee. And while there was attention paid to his white supremacy commentary at the time, there was very light coverage of Garland having said he's not interfered in the Hunter Biden probe. Now, as per usual, it's what's largely omitted from news coverage, which is the biggest story of all. In the line of questioning, about payments from foreign entities to Hunter Biden, Garland said this, quoting, if it's an agent of a foreign government asking someone and paying someone to do things to support that foreign government in secret, yes, I definitely think that would be a national security problem. Well, that's encouraging. Now, He obviously chose his words carefully, but he also painted a very clear picture about what is and isn't happening regarding a national security problem, to use his words. It is a demonstrable fact that Hunter Biden was on the board of directors of the Ukrainian energy company Burisma. It is a demonstrable fact that Hunter Biden lacked any related experience prior to being hired to that board. It's a demonstrable fact that Joe Biden, as vice president, intervened when a Ukrainian prosecutor was investigating corruption at Burisma while Hunter was on that board, demanding the prosecutor be fired or Ukraine would lose U.S. foreign aid. It's not even just proven Joe Biden is on the record bragging about having done this. It's a demonstrable fact that subsequent to that arrangement, a Chinese government controlled energy company retained Hunter Biden for five million dollars. Now, here's where we're left. Either Hunter Biden really was a preeminent preeminent Ukrainian energy expert. Running, uh, maybe since this is all for good, uh, maybe Hunter was running a a covert anti-corruption effort within Burisma, which would have been disrupted by that outside prosecutorial action or, or, you know, I don't know. Either that or you might say that Merrick Garland is willfully allowing to use his own term a national security problem 
involving the current president of the United States and his son to go unchecked. These are all facts. This is not up for interpretation. Likewise, Hunter's expert work reforming Burisma must have just been so impressive that the Chinese wanted to retain his brilliance and his expertise for millions. Because, you know, I mean, those people, they really want that good anti-corruption expert, the chai comms. So, yeah, then uh, they go, wow, look at that Hunter Biden over there. He's just cleaning up Burisma. Man, never seen anybody so talented. Hey, uh, come over here. we got some millions for you. I mean, that, that is surely the way that whole deal went down, don't you think? So, yes, um, then after the chai comms discovered that he was a, a wonderful energy reformer, they also saw his art and like, oh, my gosh, I mean, have you seen this? She? H- have you seen? I mean, we, we've never seen anything quite like this. They discovered he was a premier artist, thus the desire to buy his precious works. You know, the guy that would make Picasso blush for hundreds of thousands of dollars each. I mean, naturally, that was the next natural step for the ever talented Hunter Biden. Again, that or Merrick Garland is willfully allowing a national security problem involving the current president of the United States and his son to go unchecked. They... That means the left in this case and the news media, they really do think you're that stupid. And they, meaning the the Bidens and the Attorney General Merrick Garland, they evidently are that corrupt. But hey, still no Trump tweets, am I right? I mean, yeah, this really has all been so much better, so worth it, right? Now that testimony that Garland gave, by the way, back in early March, is the testimony which is alleged to be perjury by the would-be whistleblower if this would-be whistleblower will be heard by Congress. So where are you, Congress? Don't we care about whistleblowers and protection for them? Isn't it critical that we hold all accountable under the law? Nobody is above it. Nobody is above it. Isn't that true? I mean, we've heard so much of this recently. We pursue law without fear or favor or even donuts. Unless you brag. There's definitely no passing on the donuts there. Oh, meanwhile, in other news, yeah, Xi Jinping is ready for war. Oh, yeah, that's no big deal here, right? Yeah, uh, here's a headline to a, a story. Um. I, I know that you have not been able to get out of the way of it because it's been, you know, obviously that big of a deal. I mean, it is, after all. See, the headline to the story, Xi Jinping says he's preparing China for war. Oh, by the way, I mean, nothing to see there, right? No worries, no concerns. Anyway, that's a recent headline to a lead story at foreignaffairs.com. They often do good work there at foreignaffairs.com. And the bottom line to this story that was otherwise entirely ignored recently, if there's truth to the article, which is replete with timelines, she speeches, recent law changes in China, new mandates for citizens to join what's called the National Defense Mobilization Effort. You might say we're in just a little bit of treacherous territory here. Oh, speaking of which, the NDM, that's what they call the National Defense Mobilization Effort over there, uh, they have opened up offices in the nine largest cities in China since December, actively enlisting citizens. This would be the form of like a Chinese draft. I'll hit on a, a few of the high points. The story explains that in addition to China having doubled their military budget and spending, Their just completed project was a series of air raid shelters bordering Taiwan on the other side of the strait, accompanied by a new wartime emergency hospital. The story reported that starting last fall, she accelerated the Chinese military fusion civil initiative. 
Now, that's one in which all businesses and employees at those businesses must automatically convert to assisting the military modernization effort at she's discretion. It also details a series of four recently delivered speeches by she to his generals to be, quote unquote, war ready and to dare to fight. And there's a whole lot more context to the reporting as well, like how China has specifically monitored the failures of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and how they've adjusted and that they've been calculating the readiness and the responsiveness of the United States based on our handling of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But I mean, you forget all that stuff, right? I mean, how about some more TikTok videos? And and well, I mean, that that kind of was the conclusion, by the way, drawn by the article's authors, that Xi Jinping is literally telling officials in his country that he is preparing China for war and the world should take him seriously. That is a quote from them. The story notes that the United States is not. And part of what's notable about this story, aside from the extensive, detailed, and evidence-based reporting provided, is who is providing it. The lead author of the story, John Pomfret, the former Beijing bureau chief for the Washington Post. I might say a person in a publication not exactly known for being especially critical of the Biden administration. And his co-author, Matt Pottinger, who is currently the chair of the China program at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, was previously a deputy national security advisor to the president. So when these people who have long had a presence on the ground in China with Many administrations in the cases of one of these authors. When they report with deep evidence sourcing that Xi Jinping is preparing for war and we're indicting Trump over hush money payments. We've got Biden who's talking about oil slicks on windshields while he creates a new social justice warrior environmental office today. What do you think they're Thinking, saying, doing over there. What do you think's coming? Pick up there next. I'm Brian Mudd in for the great one. Mud Love In. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. He has spotted and observed things that are done differently in, in this particular matter, which I can't identify. Um, and he wants to talk about them, and he believes that they were influenced by politics. Yeah, once again, the attorney, Mark Lytle, for the would be IRS criminal supervisory whistleblower the i want to be a whistleblower who still a couple days in congress has not responded to about whether he will be heard after he detailed how he had been stonewalled when he ended up spilling the beans through his traditional channels so again things that make you go hmm Brian Mudd in for the gray one mark levin and as i have been depicting the corruption, so many of these stories, three big stories that have broken during the course of this week that also tie in years worth of institutionalized corruption by the Bidens that also show China taking advantage in real time of the weakness of the United States while the United States implements 
Chinese style tactics in many instances. I'm sure it's all just kind of a coincidence, right? I mean, everything's a coincidence. So here we are, you know, we're, we're a country led by a feckless president who is personally compromised by former Chinese, let's call them business dealings. And you take a look at how precarious the situation is becoming with China. Not that many people are paying attention. I mean, certainly Taiwan is. You take a look at more instability, the Sudan today. Now we got problems there. We didn't used to have these types of problems. Not a coincidence. The weakness that was seized on first by the Taliban in Afghanistan, then by Putin and Russia invading Ukraine, China, all the provocation for Taiwan, whatever they have coming next. And yes, right down to, you know, things getting uh, getting ordinary in, in the Sudan. The next year and a half with Biden at the helm is an especially precarious window of time for this country and frankly the world because of the perception of U.S. weakness that is actively being seized upon. So, yes, we could be at risk of it soon reaching its apex with China. But hey, still, none of those mean Trump tweets and, and it really is all so much better, right? Because I do know that the Ukrainians, they absolutely must think so. Ditto the Taiwanese about now. Oh, and, and by the way, yes, we are being played, but in the most dangerous way possible. So, yes, Xi Jinping says he's preparing China for war, even if it largely does not get reported in this country. But then you take a look at what's happened over the past month. That kind of goes along with all the ramping up for war in China. You have Xi Jinping having signed a pact with Russia, expanding their already strong economic relationship, ensuring Russia will continue to have the resources to carry out the war in Ukraine. Then a few weeks ago, China signs a new diplomatic and economic agreement with Saudi Arabia. Two days later, OPEC with Saudi Arabia as its largest member had that surprise cut of oil supplies that sent prices higher again that you're paying more for at the pump right now. And, of course, the U.S. is relying on foreign sources of energy again because of President Biden's week one policies eliminating U.S. energy independence. Oh, and then the next week you get China brokering a deal with Iran and Saudi Arabia. Boy, that's fun. That is fun. But. No, I mean, take a look at that uh, oil slick on your, your windshield and let's create a social justice environmental department or something. Brian Mudd, in for the great one, Mark Levin. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. Mark Levin, tough as hell. That's why I like Mark Levin. And I'm not sure a lot of people like him. He's tough as hell. But I like him. I love him. Call in now. 877-381-3811. The problem we have, though, is right now we're allowing millions and millions of people into a country. And many of those people, I don't want to sound like a bad person, but many of those people come from prisons. Many of those people come from mental institutions, insane asylums. They say, don't use that word. It's not a nice word. But they're being led into our country. And I saw recently there was an article, a doctor in a South American country, a psychiatrist. He said, you know, I've worked 24 hours a day my whole life. I don't have anything. To Little preview of this Sunday's Life, Liberty and Live In. 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the Fox News Channel. You do not want to miss 
if you're not going to catch a live, even if you are, it's a good standard operating procedure. We would talk about best practices. It's a best practice to go ahead and make sure your DVR is set to record Life, Liberty, and Live In. That way you can catch you live and in the off chance that you are are moved inappropriately from the uh, the Fox News Channel 8 o'clock on Sundays, then uh, Eastern Time, then you, you have it on the ready for you right there. Plus, you might just want to refer back to it anyway. All right, Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin, as we've been talking about so many of the big bombshell stories of the week that tie into years worth of really evidenced corruption within the Biden family. And much of it going back to Joe Biden's time as vice president. Now we see it culminating in increased aggression. We've seen this in so many different ways. The Taliban, Afghanistan, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I mean, even problems in the Sudan now that we're, we're getting involved with. We're looking at maybe having to vacate our embassy there. I mean, you notice how you know, we, we did things like have to vacate embassies and actually lose U.S. ambassadors at, at embassies during the Obama administration. That didn't happen during the Trump administration, did it? And it's funny how things actually became more peaceful during the Trump administration. But now, but hey, still no no Trump tweets. It, it really is all so much better, isn't it? All right, let's uh, go to the phones. We've got Jesse in L.A. Jesse, welcome to the show. Yes, hi, Brian. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I wanted to say yeah. I like when you have guest hosts because you guys usually take more callers. So that's great. Um, earlier you were talking about how it's important for people with like megaphones in media to be able to get out the information. And my question is, is, is it important to get out the information or is it more important to get out the information that is factual based with evidence? And I Boy, have you come to the right place. Played- Jesse, you, you have so come to the right place. I've literally made a 25 year career based around the concept that there being two sides to stories and one side to facts. So uh, you you could not come to a to a better guest host uh, for for that type of question. So please, please continue. Well, oh. um, earlier you played a clip from Fox News talking about the uh, the Hunter Biden laptop and the letter that was put out by the 50 uh, intelligence agents. And in that clip, it said that that the information was Russian disinformation. And the truth is that the memo said that it had all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation. It didn't say that it was Russian disinformation. It said it had all the hallmarks. I think details like that, among other things, are very important. And that's what we should be focused on. Mm, that's what we should be focusing on, Jesse. This is cute. So now we, we want to try to, to play a little game of semantics. So let, let's talk about the facts for a moment. Is it a fact that the Hunter Biden laptop was not Russian or any other type of disinformation? Is it is it true that the Hunter Biden laptop was real, the content? I would say the Hunter Biden, the Hunter Biden laptop itself physically true. The context and what okay. Been reported, okay, so so let's walk back. How is it possible then that fifty-one intelligence officials, most of which were formers, how is it that they would have been able to speak with authority on the matter sufficiently to put out that type of information right before a presidential election? I would say that the reason for that is because those people have been trained in historically what Russia has put out and the way they have tried to interfere in other elections. Oh, or it could be that we've actually had one of the officials who signed that that said they knew it wasn't true and they wanted to exact an outcome. Yeah, I mean, you might actually look that up because it, you actually have some one of the people who's on there that signed that, that has come public and said we knew it was crap in so many words and they were trying to exact an outcome. And then, Jesse, is it not true that on the basis of information like that, you had mainstream news outlets that widely reported 51 intelligence officials saying it's Russian Russian dis- disinformation to discredit it. And then that was used as the basis for the New York Post story that was true to be censored on every social media platform. And some people actually to have their accounts suspended and go to the New York Post for a time for disseminating the truth that the mainstream news media would not disseminate. 
Could you tell me the name of the person who said it was all BS? Yeah, I can look it up for you. I mean, I don't have it on the ready. I, I will pull it up here for you because that, that is, that's a good call. But it, even independent of that, is that not all the, the case? Is that not true? That that was used as a basis to discredit right before a presidential election and to censor actual truth. Truth that was withheld from the American people that might have influenced the outcome of the election. And, and Jesse, here's where I'll turn it around on you, because you want to talk about facts and you want to talk about truth. It is a fact that Hunter Biden had no experience whatsoever, yet he ends up on the board of Burisma while his dad happens to be vice president with oversight in Ukraine. That is a fact. It's beyond dispute. It is a fact that without any experience, Hunter ended up getting a lot of money from that gig. It's also a fact, Jesse, that uh, uh, that his dad ended up getting rid of a prosecutor that was investigating the corruption at Burisma and that Joe Biden threatened U.S. aid to Ukraine if they didn't fire the prosecutor right away. That is a fact. So documented that Joe Biden himself is on record, not only admitting it, but actually laughing about it. It is then a fact, a matter of congressional record, that you had Hunter Biden and James Biden that were involved with three other associates with a Chinese energy entity and that they ended up receiving a $5 million payment. It is there with Hunter and James Biden's signature on it. And this also is where you have a reference to the big guy that gets a cut of 10%. Now, it, it could also be, you know, just uh, Santa Claus for all we know, or perhaps the big guy might actually have been Joe. But, I mean, it's almost neither here nor there when you get to that level of granular detail. So th- the question is, are you actually interested about in, in the truth, or are you only interested in a narrative that fits what you want, whatever your reality to be? And, and this is the, the, larger, the larger problem. Trying to play a game of semantics with the broader context of everything I just laid out, which cannot be disputed, I I think is rather reprehensible. Because if we care about our country and we care about truly, uh, you know, nobody being above the law, I would think someone is interested in the, the literal truth in every possible way and the facts in every possible way, such as yourself. I would think that you would want accountability here. I would love accountability and I would love truth. One of the statements you made is not true. Okay? Because. Go for it. What statement did I make that's not true? The the prosecutor um, in Ukraine was not fired because he was investigating Burisma. He was fired because he wasn't investigating the corruption that was at Burisma. And it wasn't just Joe Biden who said, hey, you know, I'm going to leave in six hours you get rid of this guy or you don't get the money. It was the EU, the EU central bank and the United States. You, you, you are, you are a a real character. Uh, Did Joe Biden threaten us aid? If that prosecutor was not fired while Hunter Biden was on the board of Brisma and he was involved in, in that investigation. Yes or no. Did that happen? And I didn't, I didn't. I did not say that that statement was false. I said your previous statement before that. You, you see, you're full of crap. You're full of crap. You're you're trying to play a game of semantics rather than actually have any kind of accountability. If you were believable as a person on this planet, as an honest arbiter of information, you would not be playing such silly games. You'd be going, let's get accountability for what is obvious corruption here. There is no doubt. But in the circumstance that you just admitted to. Joe Biden used his office as vice president to influence a situation where there was a conflict of interest involving his son, period. That is unlawful conduct. That's not up for conversation. There's no semantics that you're going to be able to play with that. Uh, you know, it, it is not a, a detail with, with delineation. So, I mean, look, nice try, but this is the bigger problem. If all you're interested in is doing in doing is playing political games, then there's really nowhere to go. But for people who are actually interested in information and the truth, uh, you know, that's where the hope is. The hope, unfortunately, does not seem to be with with you. Let's go to Pat in Long Island. Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Brian. You bet. Let me tell you, a guy like that, that caller, Jesse, you will never get through to, okay? These people like him are what the left is made up of, okay? They 
this they rather live in fiction and not in fact. Okay? So believe me, I go through this every day. I'm a converted Democrat. I was I voted for I'm embarrassed to say it now, Obama twice. I voted for Bill Clinton twice. I was I drank the Kool Aid. But you know something? Donald Trump opened my eyes, okay? And I see the Marxist movement. Many people want to ignore it or they don't want to believe it. They don't want to believe that there is a Marxist movement. What I'd like to know, Brian, okay, is who is behind that movement. Is it George Soros? Is it Klaus Schwab? You tell me who it is, because that's what I would like to know. Yeah, no, it's a fair question. I mean, like, it's the long game that's been played, right? You go back to rules for radicals, you see the playbook. We know that quite literally Barack Obama was a student of Solinsky and rules for radicals and part of that whole scene. And so it's it's easy to kind of take a look at that. Then you take a look at all the Biden administration officials that are, you know, holdovers from the, the Obama team. That's one of the easier places you can point, but... Do I have the answer to that? No. But it ultimately is, yes, the Marxist long game that has been played in this country. It's the long game that's been played that we have so often talked about. Mark for his entire career, me for my entire career, including you know, many of the shows that uh, you know I've guest hosted for Mark, where it's the education establishment. And you know the point where you had Marxism that was embedded in the education establishment, they were able to exact outcomes. And you know so much of it started uh, back then in the 60s. It, it started when you had the Supreme Court in 64, uh, allowing God to come out of schools. It, it really was like lighter fluid in 80 when you had the Department of Education, that national effectively education across the country made sure that things like God were removed from schools and you, know, you ultimately get into it and you know, that is uh, you know I, I, part of the, the greater construct so I don't know if it's necessarily even so much as a person as it is a movement that's been part of a long game that that ultimately has been sadly successful let's go to Pepper in Oklahoma Pepper welcome to the show thank you very much you know I had the feeling immediately after he announced, uh, Biden announced that he was going to go to his ancestral home in Northern Ireland for a visit. Well, I said to myself, actually, what he's really doing is seeking politi- a possible political asylum location. And the only country which he can he can qualify for that won't deport him back to the United States would be Ireland, Northern Ireland. And so I think this is what he's done. I'm not sure he's as successful at it, but uh, he's offered him probably hundred million dollars or more in assets transferred to Ireland uh, to be invested there by by both his his he and his family, and maybe and even the Chinese communists will use that as a way of getting entry into into Ireland by by equaling or doubling it with another. 50 to 100 million dollars wouldn't put anything past him for sure and uh you know that sure looked like a personal trip that was made to be a very awkward attempt at a state visit which also by the way recently is why hunter was probably involved with that uh to the the greater point of what you're talking about there uh i'm brian mudd in for the great one mud love in Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. The fact that.
that you have uh, a would-be whistleblower coming forward, uh, a senior official at the IRS uh, who is looking to come to Congress and give uh, sworn testimony uh, that would contradict uh, you know, political appointees in the Biden administration uh, is something that should be alarming to everybody. Yeah, you would think so. That is New York Rep. Mike Law- Lawyer. And uh, I owed Jesse a, a name from uh, the 51 intelligence uh, officials that got together and involved in the Russian disinformation uh, e- email, the note, the letter that was put out about the Hunter Biden laptop preceding the 2020 election. You had former CIA acting director Mike Morell, and he organized the whole thing. By the way, he's also the one who gave up Blinken. So there you go. Owed you a name and you have it. And uh, by the way, stand by because you're likely to hear from more that were involved with that as the information begins to be disseminated. And again, you still have nobody in the administration that's willing to talk about it. But you begin to, begin to see the pieces of the administration that are corrupt. I mean, who isn't corruptible? And who is it now linked to various forms of corruption? Again, when you take a look at the long net that the Bidens have played for a very long time, it begins to really speak to why you're seeing so many of the characters. You know, it was a good call you know, talking about who is behind all of this. You know, you, you start taking a look at why so many of these characters are consistent. Now, if you have so many people that are in on misfeasance, you're going to need to keep those same people around, right? If those secrets got out, and then you begin to have problems. And that's what we're now seeing. People that want to get the information out would be whistleblowers, not just the IRS official. There's so much more to this, and we're going to get into it next hour. But yes, we are continuing to be played. We're being played by the Biden administration. We're being played by China. We're paying more for it, literally. And every single day that goes by, we have somebody who is not minding the store during a really critical time in our country's history. That's why it's important that we do our part to stay informed, but also to reach those around us. Information is key, and I'm going to have a silver lining to some of this. Can help, you know, the Jessies out there maybe, but many more people can be helped with information. We'll talk about that as well coming up next hour. I'm Brian Mudd, in for the great one, Mark Levin. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. I think we have an opportunity, if we work at it hard enough, to have a Western Hemisphere that is... United, equal, democratic, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and who am I? Where am I? Well, what am I doing here? Yeah, nothing to worry about there. I mean, definitely minding the store while we have threats building all around us. You know, China, it's not just China. And Russia isn't just Russia. There is so much more to that story, the connectivity and what, China has been building. And then, yes, the rest of the bombshell stories that have hit recently that tie into the greater theme of Biden corruption and Chinese seizing of opportunity. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. Always an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. Out of my home station, WJNO. In West Palm Beach, you can check out the Brian Mudd Show podcast wherever you get your podcast and at Brian Mudd Radio on social. China isn't just China and Russia. It isn't just Russia. China is Russia, is Iran, is North Korea, is Cuba, is Venezuela, is Nicaragua. And now we can add 
Saudi Arabia and Iran to the mix because that's fun. But wait, there's more because, well, China's also been intimidating countries around the world not to recognize Taiwan as a country, but instead as a Chinese territory. Question for you. Question for you. Taiwan, you you know it to be a, a sovereign entity, right? I mean, Taiwan is its own country. How many countries around the world do you think recognize Taiwan sovereignty right now? Do, 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 do. You have a number in mind. How many countries in the world recognize Taiwan sovereignty? The survey says 13. 13. Yeah. You see, China has had incredible success and intimidating the hell out of countries around the world. Including, by the way, pretty much all Europe pansies. This is in large part what triggered House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to recently lead a contingent to meet with Taiwan's president and a sign of resolution. And of course, what did China do when he did that? Well, they placed three aircraft carriers off of Taiwan's coast. They started to order inspections of vessels in the Taiwan Strait, using military personnel to illegally board vessels, by the way, slowing commerce and supplies into the country. And what do we do about that? Oh, right. We're Biden at the helm. I mean, China, shoot. I mean, that man has had his family receive proceeds from the Chinese communist government. I mean, naturally, he's not going to do a damn thing. So, yeah. With Biden at the helm, aside from the fact that he often seems like he doesn't even know where he is, this is an especially precarious window of time for our country and the world because of the perception of U.S. weakness, let alone the potential outright compromised position the Biden family is in with the Chinese communist government. I mean, details in all of this stuff. And here we are. Having indicted Donald Trump over seven-year-old hush money payments. And you got people watching TikTok videos blindly wondering why gas prices are shooting higher. And inflation is still a a problem. I mean, what, what could possibly go wrong, right? Mass ignorance is how we got here. Informing the masses is how we get out of here. Most people, when they are truly informed, are smart enough to make good decisions. I'm going to give you data on this before the show is up. A lot of this is complicated. How this happened isn't. Voting for Joe Biden and congressional Democrats is how we got here. Voting for the opposite is how we get out of here. Now, I want to tie in a a tale of a couple of bombshell stories over the past week. It goes back just uh, eight days ago. The first story involves a former vice president former national security advisor to the vice president, the son of a former vice president and current president, his national security advisor, the son to the current president and former president. And and I know that that's a lot of people to keep up with, uh, very challenging. But in reality, it's actually far fewer people than it really sounds. We'll come back to those folks in in this story here in a moment. Now for the people involved in the other story. It involves... A guy in his early to mid-20s described as being, originally, he's fit, he's strong, he's armed, he's trained, just about everything you could expect out of some crazy movie. That was the way it was actually described in the Washington Post story eight days ago. So back to the first one for the moment. The headline to the first story is, Ex-Obama staffer blows whistle on Biden kickback scheme after Hunter joined Burisma. Malfeasance in office. The headline for the second story was this, leaker of U.S. secret documents worked on military base, friend says. Okay, so in the first story, we have information sourced from an identified ex-Obama administration staffer. And the second story, we had information sourced from a friend. I mean, yeah, you know, what What major news organization wouldn't run with a story of extreme national and international security interest source from a friend is all I'm saying, right? And as the Washington Post described in that story at the time, uh, not just any friend. He was a friend who happened to be under 18, 
and was a young teenager when he met the suspect we later learned as Jack Teixeira on Discord. Now, we have a bombshell story run by the Washington Post, but that's also sourced by an unidentified minor. So naturally, eight days ago, which of those two bombshell stories, the one presented by Fox News, which includes a named source, Mike McCormick, a White House stenographer of 15 years, that was completely ignored by every news organization except by Fox News. And then you had the story that very conveniently hit at the exact same same time that story was hitting. With, of course, developments that kept that story moving and led to a very quick resolution. You see, what's interesting in this is the Washington Post, they publicly post their confidential sources policy. And in their confidential sources policy, they say named sources are vastly to be preferred to unnamed sources. Reporters should press to have sources go on the record. If a particular source refuses to allow us to identify him or her, the reporter should consider seeking the information elsewhere. We prefer at least two sources for factual information and post stories that depends on confidential informants, and those sources should be independent of each other. We prefer sources with firsthand or direct knowledge of the information. Right, so the Post demands a minimum of two firsthand sources to verify material that's to be published, and yet they ran with the account of one secondhand child. And then everyone else ran with that story, too. And, of course, by the end of the day, you had the New York Times who actually named him. Now, you ask, answer this question for me. If you have kids and they're on Discord, is it not the case that their friends will say, you don't even come on here unless you've read the Washington Post today? Right? Is it, it, that is what every, what every group on Discord, that, that's the go-to. The Washington Post. The, why is it the Washington Post received the information about the leaker? Is it because uh, he's like, hey, you know, I got something big and uh, the Washington Post. Now, and, and how is it that the New York Times ended up naming Jack Tishera? Why is it the Post was so confident to run with the story in the first place? Obviously, the only leaker wasn't the unidentified minor. Right. They had somebody on the inside, which I mean, look, different version of a similar thing. Does CNN and Roger Stone, for example, come to mind? And then you take a look at the information in the Fox story that was absolutely buried that same day while all that was coming out. And for good measure, last Friday to make sure that it was completely buried in the news cycle, quoting the source Mike McCormick, the stenographer of 15 years in the White House. In February, I went to the FBI and filed one of their tips on their website. If you do that and you're lying to them, you go to jail. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth and I'm not going to jail. Joe Biden is a criminal. He was conducting malfeasance in office to enrich his family. Jake Sullivan is a conspirator in that. And there's more Obama officials involved in it. I mean, Hmm. It's detailed in the story for those who are interested, which should be everyone. Interestingly, he's been attempting to testify before the grand jury in the Hunter Biden case, and the prosecutor won't let him. Isn't this interesting with the whistleblower who has come out this week trying to get Congress to listen to him? Completely different individual, different perspective different issues in malfeasance that he wants to speak to. Isn't that interesting? And isn't it interesting that we suddenly had a huge development, suddenly had the news break about Jack Teixeira right at the time that this was going on, almost like it was planned that way. And... Perhaps Mike McCormick not getting anywhere last week is what led to a separate IRS criminal supervisory agent seeking whistleblower status this week. 
because he had been stonewalled internally as well. And maybe, just maybe, there are more honorable people willing to do what's right by the law and for the country because they know that the very federal government they work for is that corrupt. There is strength in numbers. And with the cornucopia of corruption across many years, well, there are surely many more in the know than just those two. That's something to watch in this. And in addition to the whistleblower this week needing to be heard before Congress, the others that are honest, decent people on this planet that have this kind of information in the federal government, it's time for them to rise up and it's time for them to tell them their stories, strengthen numbers, expose this once and for all. There is a very real opportunity to turn the tide. And yes, the whistleblower this week is actually getting mainstream media coverage. That is helpful as well. More to come. Brian Mudd, in for the great one. Mud Lovin'. We do not want to negotiate on this. We want to make sure that they do what they did the last three times uh, and avoid default. They need to put that bill, uh, put a clean bill on the floor uh, so that we do not continue. They do not continue to hold the American. Yeah, you know, my favorite thing about the whole debt ceiling deal, you want to talk about how backwards things really are unless we raise the cap on the amount of debt that we can uh, continue to accumulate. Unless we do that, we do something fiscally irresponsible. It's the most fascinating argument in the world. Here we are, nearly $32 trillion in debt. Unless we allow ourselves to continue to accumulate more debt that at some point we will not be able to afford to pay back. And make no mistake, a lot of the inflation that we've been paying over the past couple of years is related to our runaway debt at this point and the watering down of the money supply and everything else. But that is the most fascinating argument in the world. You must accumulate even more debt. We can't possibly cut spending. No, we must accumulate more debt. The the only possibly possible way to be fiscally responsible. You must, if you max out all your credit cards, you must find another credit card company that will just give you one more credit card that you can then max out. That is the only responsible way to manage your debt. They they really do think you're that stupid. Now, Brian Mudd in for Mark Levin, and I talked about optimism with information. There are two things I'm going to point to, and since China with the Bidens has been the theme throughout the course of the show, one piece is the current favorability rating with the Chinese in the United States. Gallup has sampled annually on this for decades. As recently as 2018, 53% of Americans had a favorable opinion for some reason, unbeknownst to me, 53% of people had a favorable opinion of China. Today, Gallup came out this recently, it's down to 15%. From 53% 2018 to 15% who take a look at the Chai comms and go, yeah, that's that's a good thing over there. Okay, so some that shows a huge move with more information that people have received, right? I'm going to give you something else that's supporting here. TikTok. Most Americans don't have their head in the sand when it comes to it. Pew Research Center study recently wrapped up on TikTok. I thought this was pretty interesting. 38% more Americans believe TikTok should be banned from any use in the United States than think it should not be. Only 22% of adults are outright opposed to the banning of TikTok. That's it. Of those under the age of 30, they're the only ones who feel on a majority basis it should not be banned. Literally every age, every sex, every political persuasion, 30 and older, has majorities in favor of banning TikTok. And even 19% of regular TikTok users think it should be banned. Which really, I guess, speaks to, like, I don't know, social media addiction or something. If you're part of the 19% it goes, yeah, this is so bad, it should be banned from use. But, man, look at those videos. I mean, that's that's a condition of sorts, I guess. But anyway, the point here is information is key. 
and only 19% of those who know that TikTok's parent company is based in China are opposed to a ban. That's it. 81% of Americans who know that ByteDance, the parent of, of TikTok, is a Chinese company, 81% say, yeah, you know what, ban this thing. So when you start to put all this in perspective, information, and then you start to take a look at what's going on with China, the threat of war, how China is now manipulating the energy markets, and we're paying more for gas as a result of it because Biden made us reliant on foreign sources of energy. And then the collusion with the Chinese government, you see how things informationally can be changed. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. Liberty's voice, Mark Levin. Talk with that voice now, 877-381-3811. When I was gone, they did the withdrawal. Millie should be court-martialed. They did a withdrawal where the people, think of this, Mark, this is where the soldiers came out first. If you asked a five-year-old child strategy, the soldiers, the soldiers come out last. They were so afraid of our F-16s and our fighter jets. We had brand new, I rebuilt the whole, the whole thing. I had brand new gorgeous stuff. We had stuff that was 48 years old. They were so afraid of it. They would just run back when they heard this, with those engines. Now they own those planes. They own those planes, Mark. Isn't that special? And yeah, all part of the weakness that's been seized upon. That was the first sign of real weakness being seized upon. The world watching, the bad actors watching as the Taliban ran roughshod over us, taking over Afghanistan. Then quickly moved on by Putin as he saw opportunity with Ukraine. And of course, what did we end up hearing from Joe? Remember before the Russian invasion of Ukraine? Oh, our sanctions are going to be so tough. He'll never do it. Yeah, big, tough sanctions. And mm -hmm. boy, that sure stopped everything. And now what we're dealing with with China. It is such a big and, and undertold story. What China has done to secure the majority of the world's energy market. So Joe Biden, first week that he's in office, signs an executive order killing the Keystone XL pipeline, signs a subsequent executive order banning the harvesting of energy on federal land, and then putting huge regulations on existing producers that, in many cases, uh, led to them reducing supply. So we immediately go from U.S. energy independence to dependent on foreign sources of energy. So we have to care about what bad actors like OPEC are doing again. That was the first major catalyst towards our 40-year high inflation before the American Rescue Act, which did anything but save this country, ended up pouring kerosene on the fire and really took it off from there. But what you've had happening over the past month with China signing a limitless economic partnership with Russia, making sure they get all the oil and whatever supplies, grain and such from Russia that they want, and at a fixed market price. Then going into Saudi Arabia, largest member of OPEC, signing a similar deal, fixed prices, direct supplies from Saudi Arabia. In turn, Saudi Arabia gets a physical presence in Russia, or I'm sorry, in China. That's That was the trade-off there. And then subsequent to that, getting Iran and Saudi Arabia back on the same page. And you already had China that was aligned with Venezuela. So now China pulls the strings on the majority of the world's energy supply as they continue to provocate with Taiwan and whatever else Xi's ambitions might be from there. It's a... Uh, Treacherous times for sure. But again, it's important that people know and get the information. And if gas prices rising again, and this information alone is a way for people that are already unhappy with China to begin to get it, great. If a second whistleblower in as many weeks, I want to say Joe Biden and company are criminals. If that can lead to more coming out, great. We can get there on some of this stuff. 
Let's go to Mitch in Carbondale, Illinois. Mitch, welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, first time caller. I'm thankful for uh, having you take my call. Appreciate you calling. Uh, I was going to ask a little bit about your, your take on this new uh, um, IRS information the whistleblowers have, but I thought better to ask, let's say all of this information is valid, it holds up in court, and they uh, continue with impeachment proceedings for uh, President Biden. Will he actually be impeached because the Senate is controlled by the Democrats? But another question is, who's his successor, and is that going to be any better? Well, yes. I mean, therein lies, right? I mean, this is the, the catch-22 of the entire deal. And, and you're right. I mean, at a certain level, it's politics. Now, there is a chance, and, and this is where it, it is sheer speculation. If there is evidence produced that just cannot be hidden from, you might have some Democrats in the Senate as well that would take a look at it and go, do I really want to to die on this sword with all of this information out there? Because if there were impeachment proceedings, it would be covered. If it's so obvious for the average person to see all the problems and with Joe Biden not really being anything other than a useful boob for the greater cause in his current capacity. And there's still being opportunity, perhaps, to get a Democrat candidate that may be preferred anyway. That's when you can start to see where maybe just maybe some of that could happen. I mean, the odds of it happening are very low, especially with everything happening in time for the Democrats to be able to field another candidate. However, I mean, if you did have another candidate that ended up gaining a lot of traction, that might speed up the process if you do have some Dems that would want to throw the Bidens overboard. Otherwise, I mean, obviously, Hunter is fair game in the here and now and independent of being impeached. You know, if Biden ends up uh, at some point, he will not be the president of the United States. And and then obviously he could be dealt with uh, accordingly, especially since the president has now been set that for seven year old hush money payments, you can arrest the former president of the United States. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Cliff. And um, what's it? Pomona, California. Cliff, welcome to the show. Thank you. That's right. Uh, first time caller also. Uh, appreciate you taking my call. And uh, you're doing a great job building for the great one. Appreciate it. Um, wanted to mention you, you were talking about information from China and the education of uh, liberals. And I think, especially because it's so commonplace uh, with the conservatives, um, the mentality we have a deductive reasoning capability. I think the progressives don't. It might even be genetic, but by not having that uh, capability to deductive reason, um, they can't be instructed and shown the facts to come up with a logical conclusion. And so my kind of my big question, I guess, is, is knowing that they believe in an ideologue, how do we psychologically make a conservative movement an ideologue that they would want to move towards? You make such a great point. Um, the, I love this call. I love this question. Uh, and, and there are a couple things. You know, the, the way I'll put it to some constitutionalists, some conservatives, is you know, choose your battles. Because what often will happen in our everyday lives, those that are opposite of our beliefs politically tend to be the most ingrained in theirs. And so... The, the it's the equivalent of banging your head against the wall. You're not going to move them because they're not open to information. But the key is to finding people who are open to information and then finding avenues with which you can reason. And I have seen a number of people over the years informationally begin to change this way. Many listeners that have come to me over the years and have explained it. You know, it's just like the you know, one of the callers we had earlier in the show said, look, I was a, a two time Clinton voter, I was a two time Obama voter. And, you know, the world makes sense to me now. Uh, it, that kind of stuff does happen. And so it's part of the reason why I mention China in particular seems to be a catalyst. And you you want to talk about how people can be moved, even those that might not be with sound reason generally. I don't know what the specific moment was that led to 
a majority of Americans approving of China as recently as 2018, but only 15 percent holding a favorable view of China today. But something did it. I mean, it's probably multiple some things. But the point is that 85 percent of people can take a look at communist China and see it for what it is. The 15 percent at this point, probably those that are not going to be able to be reasoned with under any circumstance and probably are often the the loudest. And so where you can find those common themes and threads and where I typically work is is on the financial side and financial analytics. What we've been living through is a really great example. One of the reasons that I kind of tied things away together the way I did during the course of the show is one to show the connectivity and the long game that's been going on here with corruption things, but then also how China is making use and manipulating all of this right down to the gas that we're pumping right now. China doesn't have their own energy. They're importing all of their oil. They're reliant far more than we are on foreign sources of energy. And yet they are now manipulating the world energy market. We are paying more at the pump today and will continue to because of China, because China has been able to successfully manipulate for a very long time Venezuela, but really manipulate the heck out of Russia now. And they've now got OPEC in their hands with Saudi Arabia and Iran in their back pocket and with private deals to where they don't have to worry about market prices around the world. They're going to get the oil, whatever their fixed price agreement happened to be. And so it's things like that, where if 85% of people go, China's bad news, and now I'm, I'm paying you know four bucks a gallon again because of China? Why did we let China, why are, why are we not taking care of our own energy needs? Can't we do that? Well, yeah, we, we can. We've just chosen not to have a president who's who's chosen to sign executive actions making sure that kind of thing doesn't happen that's where i think informationally for those that are reachable you, we can we can make progress it's just one example there there can be many and they, it can be specific to the individual getting to know what animates a particular person can help but i think that is one highly instruct, instructive example with real world happenings right now so hopefully that's uh that's helpful Let's go to Gary, Staten Island. Gary, welcome to the show. Oh, it's a great privilege. Uh, I know Mark's at the uh, Reagan uh, Ranch right now. It's some important you got it. function. And I know you're doing a great job here, tackling a very serious subject. And um, I'm a Trump supporter, um, but nobody's perfect, and. Um, I think it's true that the entire business class, both parties, Republicans and Democrats as well, have been doing business with the Chinese. Case in point, Ivanka Trump uh, had a plant in uh, China, uh, a clothing line, and uh, I think we need to deal with... Facts. Uh, Henry Kissinger, of course, um, must have made a ton of money with the Chinese. Elaine Chow, the wife of uh, Mitch McConnell, she's Chinese, and she does a lot of business with her husband, with the Chinese. And I've begun researching on the Internet, you know, this topic, and... (laughs) I mean, if I told you what I just stumbled into, you would say I was making it up. Well, no, Gary, you're, you you make a very instructive point. Look, historically, Republicans have been, uh, you know, every bit as bad in, in terms of, you know, profiting from China. Now, you know, in the here and now, um, that perhaps isn't as pervasive as it once was, although there are. Many examples that do still exist to your broader point. And then you also have a lot of people that even might be, uh, you know, American businesses that mean well. But dang, you know, it really is just so much cheaper to manufacture in China. So we're, we're going to do that. It, th- those realities remain. There's no doubt about it. But then you take a look at somebody who 
represented an existential threat. Is there any doubt but the single greatest threat to China to come about Donald Trump? And he, against the desire of many on the right, to your point, went ahead with the Chinese tariffs. I mean, you remember, you had some within his own ranks that were like, no, you, you, you really shouldn't be doing this. And uh, we were all told, oh, my gosh, everything's going to become so expensive and it's going to send us into a recession, everything else. And all that ended up happening was our economic growth ended up expanding even further. American jobs took off. American manufacturing had a renaissance. Uh, everything that they said was bullcrap. In fact, the irony of the Trump tariffs to this day is that Biden actually did not take those down. Uh, one thing that he has done uh, pertaining to China policy oh, that has been good is simply not eradicating the Trump tariffs. And that is, I think, the broader point. And part of the reason I didn't spend much time on it in, uh, in the show, but why the getting Trump factor in the context of everything else that's going on here, I find to be so interesting. It doesn't seem as though it's, it's the most coincidental thing. Brian Mudd in for the great one. Mud love in. Every Democrat voted against women and women in sports. It is amazing to me that that happened. Yeah, Caitlyn Jenner, and isn't that the truth? I mean, doesn't that just speak volumes? But hey, you even have a couple ESPN commentators now that are coming out against the Democrats having taken that position. Actually going, hey, you know what? Maybe a dude who calls himself a lady playing with girls is not the best idea that that we've ever had right maybe that's not the right path forward for for things yeah, just a just a thought yeah Brian Mudd in for the great one Mark Levin and all throughout the course of the show as per always I try to bring you as many facts as possible as always two sides of stories one side of facts and as I have been weaving together all the information throughout the course of the show I've also been talking about information being key and being able to have access to that information and for us to all do our part to reach those around us who are reachable with real information. Because I do think I'm still an optimist to believe in this country. I do think that we can we can have positive change. I am not going to be a, a defeatist here and, and think that the ship has sailed. But it is important to have these conversations, right? It is in, important to have access to information and, and, frankly, for that matter, choice. And to that end, you might have heard that there are several auto manufacturers that are looking to remove AM radio and future car models. Need your help to save AM radio. Not the time to be getting rid of AM radio, is it? So what we could use your help with, and I implore you to do this, text the letters AM to 52886. Again, text the letters AM to 52886. Appreciate it. Send Congress the message. Hey, Life Liberty Levin, do not miss it. Fox News Channel, 8 o'clock Eastern. Donald Trump with the great one from Mar a Lago. You will love that show. Enjoy your weekend. Mark will be back with you on Monday. Brian Mudd, and for the great one, Mark Levin.